The hydrogen economy is the use of hydrogen as a fuel, particularly for electricity production and hydrogen vehicles, and using hydrogen for long-term energy storage and for long-distance transport of low-carbon energy. The hydrogen economy is proposed as being a part of the future low-carbon economy. In order for human society to move away from the hydrocarbon economy, hydrogen is considered as its combustion only releases clean water, and no CO2 to the atmosphere. Hydrogen gas itself can therefore be considered a clean fuel. Hydrogen gas, however, does not occur naturally in convenient reservoirs, it must be produced from other sources. Steam methane reforming is the dominant method of doing so. Around 96% of the hydrogen produced annually today is produced by this process. The purpose of the current production of this hydrogen is as an industrial feedstock, primarily for the production of ammonia, methanol and petroleum refining. Around 96% of the world's hydrogen is produced from natural gas steam reforming. The remainder is produced as a byproduct from electrolysis processes such as chloralkali. Small amounts of hydrogen are produced by the dedicated production of hydrogen from water. The production of hydrogen from both the natural gas steam reforming process and the dedicated water electrolysis process are hampered by unavoidable efficiency issues. Using fossil-based electricity to produce hydrogen from electrolysis, and subsequently using that hydrogen in a fuel cell has a negligible effect on CO2 emissions depending on the fuel used for the electricity production, the production of large amounts of clean electricity from renewable and nuclear resources must therefore first be affected, before hydrogen can become an effective energy carrier. Topic Rationale A hydrogen economy was proposed by the University of Michigan to solve some of the negative effects of using hydrocarbon fuels where the carbon is released to the atmosphere as carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, unburnt hydrocarbons, etc. Modern interest in the hydrogen economy can generally be traced to a 1970 technical report by Lawrence W. Jones of the University of Michigan. In the current hydrocarbon economy, transportation is fueled primarily by petroleum and heating by natural gas. Burning of hydrocarbon fuels emits carbon dioxide and other pollutants. The demand for energy is increasing, particularly in China, India, and other developing countries. Proponents of a world-scale hydrogen economy argue that hydrogen can be an environmentally cleaner source of energy to end users, without release of pollutants such as particulates or carbon dioxide. A 2004 analysis asserted that most of the hydrogen supply chain pathways would release significantly less carbon dioxide into the atmosphere than would gasoline used in hybrid electric vehicles, and that significant reductions in carbon dioxide emissions would be possible if carbon capture or carbon sequestration methods were utilized at the site of energy or hydrogen production. Hydrogen has a high energy density by weight but has a low energy density by volume. Even when highly compressed or liquefied, the energy density by volume is only one quarter that of gasoline, although the energy density by weight is approximately three times that of gasoline or natural gas. An Otto cycle internal combustion engine running on hydrogen is said to have a maximum efficiency of about 38%, 8% higher than a gasoline internal combustion engine. The combination of the fuel cell and electric motor is two to three times more efficient than an internal combustion engine. 
capital costs of fuel cells have reduced significantly over recent years, with a modeled cost of $50 per kilowatt cited by the Department of Energy. Previous technical obstacles have included hydrogen storage issues and the purity requirement of hydrogen used in fuel cells. As with current technology, an operating fuel cell requires the purity of hydrogen to be as high as 99.999%. Hydrogen engine conversion technology could be considered more economical than fuel cells. Topic History. The term hydrogen economy was coined by John Bockris during a talk he gave in 1970 at General Motors GM Technical Center. The concept was proposed earlier by geneticist J. B. S. Haldane, a spike in attention for the concept during the 2000s was repeatedly described as hype by some critics and proponents of alternative technologies. Interest in the energy carrier resurged in the 2010s, notably by the forming of the Hydrogen Council in 2017. Several manufacturers released hydrogen fuel cell cars commercially, with manufacturers such as Toyota and industry groups in China planning to increase numbers of the cars into the hundreds of thousands over the next decade. Topic. Current hydrogen market Hydrogen production is a large and growing industry, as of 2004. Globally, some 57 million metric tons of hydrogen, equal to about 170 million tons of oil equivalent, were produced in 2004. The growth rate is around 10% per year. Within the United States, 2004 production was about 11 million metric tons MT, an average power flow of 48 gigawatts. For comparison, the average electric production in 2003 was some 442 gigawatts. As of 2005, the economic value of all hydrogen produced worldwide is about $135 billion per year. There are two primary uses for hydrogen today. About half is used in the harbor process to produce ammonia NH3, which is then used directly or indirectly as fertilizer. Because both the world population and the intensive agriculture used to support it are growing, ammonia demand is growing. Ammonia can be used as a safer and easier indirect method of transporting hydrogen. Transported ammonia can be then converted back to hydrogen at the Bowser by a membrane technology. The other half of current hydrogen production is used to convert heavy petroleum sources into lighter fractions suitable for use as fuels. This latter process is known as hydrocracking. Hydrocracking represents an even larger growth area, since rising oil prices encourage oil companies to extract poorer source material, such as oil sands and oil shale. The scale economies inherent in large-scale oil refining and fertilizer manufacture make possible on-site production and captive use. Smaller quantities of merchant Hydrogen are manufactured and delivered to end users as well. If energy for hydrogen production were available from wind, solar, fission or fusion nuclear power etc., use of the substance for hydrocarbon synfuel production could expand captive use of hydrogen by a factor of 5 to 10. Present U.S. use of hydrogen for hydrocracking is roughly 4 mount per year. It is estimated that 37.7 mt per year of hydrogen would be sufficient to convert enough domestic coal to liquid fuels to end U.S. dependence on foreign oil importation, and less than half this figure to end dependence on Middle East oil. 
Coal liquefaction would present significantly worse emissions of carbon dioxide than does the current system of burning fossil petroleum, but it would eliminate the political and economic vulnerabilities inherent in U.S. oil importation before the commercialization of tight oil in North America. As of 2004 and 2016, 96% of global hydrogen production is from fossil fuels, 48% from natural natural gas, 30% from oil, and 18% from coal, water electrolysis accounts for only 4%. The distribution of production reflects the effects of thermodynamic constraints on economic choices, of the four methods for obtaining hydrogen, partial combustion of natural gas in a NGCC natural gas combined cycle power plant offers the most efficient chemical pathway and the greatest offtake of usable heat energy. Needs reference the large market and sharply rising prices in fossil fuels have also stimulated great interest in alternate, cheaper means of hydrogen production. As of 2002, most hydrogen is produced on site and the cost is approximately 70 cents per kilogram and, if not produced on site, the cost of liquid hydrogen is about $2.20 per kilogram to $3.08 per kilogram. Topic. Production, storage, infrastructure Today's hydrogen is mainly produced greater than 90% from fossil sources. Linking its centralized production to a fleet of light-duty fuel cell vehicles would require the siting and construction of a distribution infrastructure with large investment of capital. Further, the technological challenge of providing safe, energy-dense storage of hydrogen on board the vehicle must be overcome to provide sufficient range between fill-ups. <laughs> <laughs> Methods of production Molecular hydrogen is not available on Earth in convenient natural reservoirs. Most hydrogen in the lithosphere is bonded to oxygen in water. Manufacturing elemental hydrogen does require the consumption of a hydrogen carrier such as a fossil fuel or water. The former carrier consumes the fossil resource and produces carbon dioxide, but often requires no further energy input beyond the fossil fuel. Decomposing water, the latter carrier, requires electrical or heat input, generated from some primary energy source, fossil fuel, nuclear power or a renewable energy. Hydrogen can also be produced by refining the effluent from geothermal sources in the lithosphere. Hydrogen produced by zero-emission renewable energy sources such as electrolysis of water using wind power, solar power, hydropower, wave power or tidal power is referred to as green hydrogen. Hydrogen produced by non-renewable energy sources may be referred to as brown hydrogen. Hydrogen produced as a waste byproduct or industrial byproduct is sometimes referred to as gray hydrogen. Topic: <laughs> Current production methods. Hydrogen is industrially produced from steam reforming, which uses fossil fuels such as natural gas, oil, or coal. The energy content of the produced hydrogen is less than the energy content of the original fuel, some of it being lost as excessive heat during production. Steam reforming leads to carbon dioxide emissions, in the same way as a car engine would do. A small part, 4% in 2006, is produced by electrolysis using electricity and water, consuming approximately 50 kWh of electricity per kilogram of hydrogen produced.
Topic K Viner process The K Viner process or K Viner carbon black and hydrogen process CB and H is a method, developed in the 1980s by a Norwegian company of the same name, for the production of hydrogen from hydrocarbons, CNHM, such as methane, natural gas, and biogas. Of the available energy of the feed, approximately 48% is contained in the hydrogen, 40% is contained in activated carbon and 10% in superheated steam. Electrolysis of water Hydrogen can be made via high-pressure electrolysis, low-pressure electrolysis of water, or a range of other emerging electrochemical processes such as high-temperature electrolysis or carbon-assisted electrolysis. However, current best processes for water electrolysis have an effective electrical efficiency of 70–80%, so that producing 1 kg of hydrogen, which has a specific energy of 143 MJ per kilogram or about 40 kWh per kilogram requires 50–55 kWh of electricity. At an electricity cost of 6 cents per kilowatt hour, as set out in the Department of Energy Hydrogen Production targets for 2015, the hydrogen cost is $3 per kilogram. With the range of natural gas prices from 2016 as shown in the graph, Hydrogen Production Tech Team Roadmap, November 2017, putting the cost of SMR hydrogen at between $1.20 and $1.50, and the cost price of hydrogen via electrolysis is still over double 2015 DO hydrogen target prices. The U.S. DOE target price for hydrogen in 2020 is $2.30 per kilogram, requiring an electricity cost $0.037 per kWh, which is achievable given recent PPA tenders for wind and solar in many regions. This puts the $4 per GGH2 dispensed objective well within reach, and close to a slightly elevated natural gas production cost for SMR. In other parts of the world, steam methane reforming is between $1-3 per kilograms on average. This makes production of hydrogen via electrolysis cost competitive in many regions already, as outlined by Nell Hydrogen and others, including an article by the IEA examining the conditions which could lead to a competitive advantage for electrolysis. Topic: Experimental production methods. Topic. Biological production Fermentative hydrogen production is the fermentative conversion of organic substrate to biohydrogen manifested by a diverse group of bacteria using multi-enzyme systems involving three steps similar to anaerobic conversion. Dark fermentation reactions do not require light energy, so they are capable of constantly producing hydrogen from organic compounds throughout the day and night. Photofermentation differs from dark fermentation because it only proceeds in the presence of light. For example, photofermentation with Rhodobacter spheroids SH2C can be employed to convert small molecular fatty acids into hydrogen. Electrohydrogenesis is used in microbial fuel cells where hydrogen is produced from organic matter e.g. from sewage, or solid matter, while 0.2 to 0.8 volts is applied. Biological hydrogen can be produced in an algae bioreactor. 
In the late 1990s it was discovered that if the algae is deprived of sulfur it will switch from the production of oxygen, i.e. normal photosynthesis, to the production of hydrogen. Biological hydrogen can be produced in bioreactors that use feedstocks other than algae, the most common feedstock being waste streams. The process involves bacteria feeding on hydrocarbons and excreting hydrogen and CO2. The CO2 can be sequestered successfully by several methods, leaving hydrogen gas. In 2006–2007, Nanologics first demonstrated a prototype hydrogen bioreactor using waste as a feedstock at Welch's Grape Juice Factory in Northeast, Pennsylvania, U.S. <laughs> Biocatalyzed electrolysis Besides regular electrolysis, electrolysis using microbes is another possibility. With biocatalyzed electrolysis, hydrogen is generated after running through the microbial fuel cell and a variety of aquatic plants can be used. These include reed sweetgrass, cordgrass, rice, tomatoes, lupins, and algae. Topic: High pressure electrolysis. High pressure electrolysis is the electrolysis of water by decomposition of water H2O into oxygen O2 and hydrogen gas H2 by means of an electric current being passed through the water. The difference with a standard electrolyzer is the compressed hydrogen output around 120 to 200 bars, 1740 to 2900 psi, 12 to 20 megapascals. By pressurizing the hydrogen in the electrolyzer, through a process known as chemical compression, the need for an external hydrogen compressor is eliminated. The average energy consumption for internal compression is around 3%. European largest 1,400,000 kilograms a high pressure electrolysis of water alkaline technology hydrogen production plant is operating at Kokkola, Finland. Topic: <laughs> High temperature electrolysis. Hydrogen can be generated from energy supplied in the form of heat and electricity through high-temperature electrolysis HTE. Because some of the energy in HTE is supplied in the form of heat, less of the energy must be converted twice from heat to electricity, and then to chemical form, and so potentially far less energy is required per kilogram of hydrogen produced. While nuclear-generated electricity could be used for electrolysis, nuclear heat can be directly applied to split hydrogen from water. High temperature 950 to 1000 degrees Celsius gas-cooled nuclear reactors have the potential to split hydrogen from water by thermochemical means using nuclear heat. Research into high-temperature nuclear reactors may eventually lead to a hydrogen supply that is cost-competitive with natural gas steam reforming. General Atomics predicts that hydrogen produced in a high-temperature gas-cooled reactor HTGR, would cost $1.53 per kilogram. In 2003, steam reforming of natural gas yielded hydrogen at $1.40 per kilogram. In 2005 natural gas prices, hydrogen costs $2.70 per kilogram. High temperature electrolysis has been demonstrated in a laboratory, at 108 megajoules thermal per kilogram of hydrogen produced, but not at a commercial scale. In addition, this is lower quality, commercial, grade hydrogen, unsuitable for use in fuel cells. 
Topic: <laughs> Photoelectrochemical water splitting. Using electricity produced by photovoltaic systems offers the cleanest way to produce hydrogen. Water is broken into hydrogen and oxygen by electrolysis, a photoelectrochemical cell PEC process which is also named artificial photosynthesis. William Ayres at Energy Conversion Devices demonstrated and patented the first multi-junction high-efficiency photoelectrochemical system for direct splitting of water in 1983. This group demonstrated direct water splitting now referred to as an artificial leaf or wireless solar water splitting with a low-cost thin film amorphous silicon multijunction sheet immersed directly in water. Hydrogen evolved on the front amorphous silicon surface decorated with various catalysts while oxygen evolved off the back metal substrate. A navion membrane above the multijunction cell provided a path for ion transport. Their patent also lists a variety of other semiconductor multijunction materials for the direct water splitting in addition to amorphous silicon and silicon germanium alloys. Research continues towards developing high-efficiency multijunction cell technology at universities and the photovoltaic industry. If this process is assisted by photocatalysts suspended directly in water instead of using photovoltaic and an electrolytic system, the reaction is in just one step, which can improve efficiency. Topic: Photoelectrocatalytic production. A method studied by Thomas Nan and his team at the University of East Anglia consists of a gold electrode covered in layers of indium phosphide (INP) nanoparticles. They introduced an iron-sulfur complex into the layered arrangement, which when submerged in water and irradiated with light under a small electric current, produced hydrogen with an efficiency of 60%. In 2015, it was reported that Panasonic Corp. has developed a photocatalyst based on niobium nitride that can absorb 57% of sunlight to support the decomposition of water to produce hydrogen gas. The company plans to achieve commercial application as early as possible, not before 2020. Topic: <laughs> Concentrating solar thermal. Very high temperatures are required to dissociate water into hydrogen and oxygen. A catalyst is required to make the process operate at feasible temperatures. Heating the water can be achieved through the use of concentrating solar power. HYDROSOL2 is a 100 kW pilot plant at the Plataforma Solar de Almeria in Spain which uses sunlight to obtain the required 800 to 1200 degrees Celsius to heat water. Hydrosol 2 has been in operation since 2008. The design of this 100 kW pilot plant is based on a modular concept. As a result, it may be possible that this technology could be readily scaled up to the megawatt range by multiplying the available reactor units and by connecting the plant to heliostat fields, fields of sun tracking mirrors of a suitable size. Topic. Thermochemical production 
There are more than 352 thermochemical cycles which can be used for water splitting, around a dozen of these cycles such as the iron oxide cycle, cerium IV oxide cerium, 3 oxide cycle, zinc zinc oxide cycle, sulfur iodine cycle, copper chlorine cycle and hybrid sulfur cycle are under research and in testing phase to produce hydrogen and oxygen from water and heat with without using electricity. These processes can be more efficient than high-temperature electrolysis, typical in the range from 35% to 49% LHV efficiency. Thermochemical production of hydrogen using chemical energy from coal or natural gas is generally not considered, because the direct chemical path is more efficient. None of the thermochemical hydrogen production processes have been demonstrated at production levels, although several have been demonstrated in laboratories. Topic: <laughs> Hydrogen as a byproduct of other chemical processes. The industrial production of chlorine and caustic soda by electrolysis generates a sizable amount of hydrogen as a byproduct. In the port of Antwerp a 1 MW demonstration fuel cell power plant is powered by such byproduct. This unit has been operational since late 2011. The excess hydrogen is often managed with a hydrogen pinch analysis. Topic. Storage Although molecular hydrogen has very high energy density on a mass basis, partly because of its low molecular weight, as a gas at ambient conditions it has very low energy density by volume. If it is to be used as fuel stored on board the vehicle, pure hydrogen gas must be stored in an energy-dense form to provide sufficient driving range. <laughs> Pressurized hydrogen gas Increasing gas pressure improves the energy density by volume, making for smaller, but not lighter container tanks see pressure vessel. Achieving higher pressures necessitates greater use of external energy to power the compression. The mass of the hydrogen tanks needed for compressed hydrogen reduces the fuel economy of the vehicle. Because it is a small molecule, hydrogen tends to diffuse through any liner material intended to contain it, leading to the embrittlement, or weakening, of its container. The most common method of on-board hydrogen storage in today's demonstration vehicles is as a compressed gas at pressures of roughly 700 bars 70 megapascals. Topic. Liquid hydrogen Alternatively, higher volumetric energy density liquid hydrogen or slush hydrogen may be used. However, liquid hydrogen is cryogenic and boils at 20.268 K minus 252.882 degrees Celsius or minus 423.188 degrees Fahrenheit. Cryogenic storage cuts weight but requires large liquefaction energies. The liquefaction process, involving pressurizing and cooling steps, is energy intensive. The liquefied hydrogen has lower energy density by volume than gasoline by approximately a factor of 4, because of the low density of liquid hydrogen. There is actually more hydrogen in a liter of gasoline 116 grams than there is in a liter of pure liquid hydrogen 71 grams. Liquid hydrogen storage tanks must also be well insulated to minimize boil-off. 
Japan have a liquid hydrogen LH2 storage facility at a terminal in Kobe, and are expected to receive the first shipment of liquid hydrogen via LH2 carrier in 2020. Hydrogen is liquefied by reducing its temperature to minus 253 degrees Celsius, similar to liquefied natural gas (LNG), which is stored at minus 162 degrees Celsius. A potential efficiency loss of 12.79% can be achieved, or 4.26 kWh per kilogram out of 33.3 kWh per kilogram. Storage as hydride Distinct from storing molecular hydrogen, hydrogen can be stored as a chemical hydride or in some other hydrogen-containing compound. Hydrogen gas is reacted with some other materials to produce the hydrogen storage material, which can be transported relatively easily. At the point of use the hydrogen storage material can be made to decompose, yielding hydrogen gas as well as the mass and volume density problems associated with molecular hydrogen storage current barriers to practical storage schemes stem from the high pressure and temperature conditions needed for hydride formation and hydrogen release for many potential systems hydriding and dehydriding kinetics and heat management are also issues that need to be overcome a French company MCPHY Energy 3 is developing the first industrial product, based on magnesium hydrate, already sold to some major clients such as Iwatani and Enel. Adsorption A third approach is to adsorb molecular hydrogen on the surface of a solid storage material. Unlike in the hydrides mentioned above, the hydrogen does not dissociate, recombine upon charging, discharging the storage system, and hence does not suffer from the kinetic limitations of many hydride storage systems. Hydrogen densities similar to liquefied hydrogen can be achieved with appropriate adsorbent materials. Some suggested adsorbents include activated carbon, nanostructured carbons including CNTs, MOFs, and hydrogen clathrate hydrate. <laughs> Underground hydrogen storage Underground hydrogen storage is the practice of hydrogen storage in underground caverns, salt domes and depleted oil and gas fields. Large quantities of gaseous hydrogen have been stored in underground caverns by ICI for many years without any difficulties. The storage of large quantities of liquid hydrogen underground can function as grid energy storage. The round trip efficiency is approximately 40% versus 75 to 80% for pumped hydro PHES and the cost is slightly higher than pumped hydro. Another study referenced by a European staff working paper found that for large scale storage the cheapest option is hydrogen at 140 euros per megawatt hour for 2000 hours of storage using an electrolyzer salt cavern storage and combined cycle power plant. The European project Hyundai indicated in 2013 that for the storage of wind and solar energy an additional 85 caverns are required as it cannot be covered by PHES and CAES systems. A German case study on storage of hydrogen in salt caverns found that if the German power surplus 7% of total variable renewable generation by 2025 and 20% by 2050 would be converted to hydrogen and stored underground, these quantities would require some 15 caverns of 500,000 cubic meters each. 
by 2025 and some 60 caverns by 2050 corresponding to approximately one-third of the number of underground gas caverns currently operated in Germany. In the US, Sandia Labs are conducting research into the storage of hydrogen in depleted oil and gas fields, which could easily absorb large amounts of renewably produced hydrogen as there are some 2.7 million depleted wells in existence. <laughs> Power to gas Power to gas is a technology which converts electrical power to a gas fuel. There are two methods, the first is to use the electricity for water splitting and inject the resulting hydrogen into the natural gas grid. The second, less efficient method is used to convert carbon dioxide and water to methane, see natural gas, using electrolysis and the Sabatier reaction. The excess power or off-peak power generated by wind generators or solar arrays is then used for load balancing in the energy grid. Using the existing natural gas system for hydrogen fuel cell maker Hydrogenics and natural gas distributor Enbridge have teamed up to develop such a power-to-gas system in Canada. Topic pipeline storage A natural gas network may be used for the storage of hydrogen. Before switching to natural gas, the UK and German gas networks were operated using Taungas, which for the most part consisted of hydrogen. The storage capacity of the German natural gas network is more than 200,000 gigawatt hours which is enough for several months of energy requirement. By comparison, the capacity of all German pump storage power plants amounts to only about 40 gigawatt hours. Similarly, UK pump storage is far less than the gas network. The transport of energy through a gas network is done with much less loss. The use of the existing natural gas pipelines for hydrogen was studied by NaturalHe. Topic: Infrastructure. The hydrogen infrastructure would consist mainly of industrial hydrogen pipeline transport and hydrogen-equipped filling stations like those found on a hydrogen highway. Hydrogen stations which were not situated near a hydrogen pipeline would get supply via hydrogen tanks, compressed hydrogen tube trailers, liquid hydrogen trailers, liquid hydrogen tank trucks or dedicated on-site production. Because of hydrogen embrittlement of steel, and corrosion natural gas pipes require internal coatings or replacement in order to convey hydrogen. Techniques are well known, over 700 miles of hydrogen pipeline currently exist in the United States. Although expensive, pipelines are the cheapest way to move hydrogen. Hydrogen gas piping is routine in large oil refineries, because hydrogen is used to hydrocrack fuels from crude oil. Hydrogen piping can in theory be avoided in distributed systems of hydrogen production, where hydrogen is routinely made on site using medium or small-sized generators which would produce enough hydrogen for personal use or perhaps a neighborhood. In the end, a combination of options for hydrogen gas distribution may succeed. While millions of tons of elemental hydrogen are distributed around the world each year in various ways, bringing hydrogen to individual consumers would require an evolution of the fuel infrastructure. For example, according to GM, 70% of the U.S. population lives near a hydrogen generating facility but has little public access to that hydrogen. The same study however, shows that building the infrastructure in a systematic way is much more doable and affordable than most people think. 
For example, one article has noted that hydrogen stations could be put within every 10 miles in Metro Los Angeles, and on the highways between LA and neighboring cities like Palm Springs, Las Vegas, San Diego and Santa Barbara, for the cost of a Starbucks latte for every one of the 15 million residents living in these areas. Topic: A key trade-off: centralized versus distributed production. In a future full hydrogen economy, primary energy sources and feedstock would be used to produce hydrogen gas as stored energy for use in various sectors of the economy. Producing hydrogen from primary energy sources other than coal, oil, and natural gas, would result in lower production of the greenhouse gases characteristic of the combustion of these fossil energy resources. One key feature of a hydrogen economy would be that in mobile applications primarily vehicular transport energy generation and use could be decoupled. The primary energy source would need no longer travel with the vehicle, as it currently does with hydrocarbon fuels. Instead of tailpipes creating dispersed emissions, the energy and pollution could be generated from point sources such as large-scale, centralized facilities with improved efficiency. This would allow the possibility of technologies such as carbon sequestration, which are otherwise impossible for mobile applications. Alternatively, distributed energy generation schemes such as small-scale renewable energy sources could be used, possibly associated with hydrogen stations. Aside from the energy generation, hydrogen production could be centralized, distributed or a mixture of both. While generating hydrogen at centralized primary energy plants promises higher hydrogen production efficiency, difficulties in high volume, long range hydrogen transportation, due to factors such as hydrogen damage and the ease of hydrogen diffusion through solid materials, makes electrical energy distribution attractive within a hydrogen economy. In such a scenario, small regional plants or even local filling stations could generate hydrogen using energy provided through the electrical distribution grid. While hydrogen generation efficiency is likely to be lower than for centralized hydrogen generation, losses in hydrogen transport could make such a scheme more efficient in terms of the primary energy used per kilogram of hydrogen delivered to the end user. The proper balance between hydrogen distribution and long-distance electrical distribution is one of the primary questions that arises about the hydrogen economy. Again the dilemmas of production sources and transportation of hydrogen can now be overcome using on-site, home, business, or fuel station, generation of hydrogen from off-grid renewable sources, for Topic. Distributed electrolysis Distributed electrolysis would bypass the problems of distributing hydrogen by distributing electricity instead. It would use existing electrical networks to transport electricity to small, on-site electrolyzers located at filling stations. However, accounting for the energy used to produce the electricity and transmission losses would reduce the overall efficiency. Natural gas combined cycle power plants, which account for almost all construction of new electricity generation plants in the United States, generate electricity at efficiencies of 60% or greater. Increased demand for electricity, whether due to hydrogen cars or other demand, would have the marginal impact of adding new combined cycle power plants. On this basis, distributed production of hydrogen would be roughly 40% efficient. 
However, if the marginal impact is referred to today's power grid, with an efficiency of roughly 40% owing to its mix of fuels and conversion methods, the efficiency of distributed hydrogen production would be roughly 25%. The distributed production of hydrogen in this fashion would be expected to generate air emissions of pollutants and carbon dioxide at various points in the supply chain, e.g., electrolysis transportation and storage. Topic. Fuel cells as alternative to internal combustion One of the main offerings of a hydrogen economy is that the fuel can replace the fossil fuel burned in internal combustion engines and turbines as the primary way to convert chemical energy into kinetic or electrical energy, hereby eliminating greenhouse gas emissions and pollution from that engine. Although hydrogen can be used in conventional internal combustion engines, fuel cells, being electrochemical, have a theoretical efficiency advantage over heat engines. Fuel cells are more expensive to produce than common internal combustion engines. Some types of fuel cells work with hydrocarbon fuels, while all can be operated on pure hydrogen. In the event that fuel cells become price competitive with internal combustion engines and turbines, large gas-fired power plants could adopt this technology. Hydrogen gas must be distinguished as technical grade. 5.9's pure, 99.999%, which is suitable for applications such as fuel cells, and commercial grade which has carbon and sulfur-containing impurities, but which can be produced by the much cheaper steam reformation process. Fuel cells require high-purity hydrogen because the impurities would quickly degrade the life of the fuel cell stack. Much of the interest in the hydrogen economy concept is focused on the use of fuel cells to power hydrogen vehicles. Current hydrogen fuel cells suffer from a low power-to-weight ratio. Fuel cells are much more efficient than internal combustion engines, and produce no harmful emissions. If a practical method of hydrogen storage is introduced, and fuel cells become cheaper, they can be economically viable to power hybrid fuel cell, battery vehicles, or purely fuel cell-driven ones. The economic viability of fuel cell-powered vehicles will improve as the use of internal combustion engine vehicles becomes more expensive because of charges to cover the costs of their air pollution, through such measures as carbon taxes and low emission zones. Other fuel cell technologies based on the exchange of metal ions e.g. zinc air fuel cells are typically more efficient at energy conversion than hydrogen fuel cells, but the widespread use of any electrical energy chemical energy electrical energy systems would necessitate the production of electricity. Topic use as an automotive fuel and system efficiency and accounting of the energy utilized during a thermodynamic process, known as an energy balance, can be applied to automotive fuels. With today's technology, the manufacture of hydrogen via steam reforming can be accomplished with a thermal efficiency of 75 to 80 percent. Additional energy will be required to liquefy or compress the hydrogen, and to transport it to the filling station via truck or pipeline. The energy that must be utilized per kilogram to produce, transport and deliver hydrogen i.e., its well-to-tank energy use is approximately 50 MJ using technology available in 2004. Subtracting this energy from the enthalpy of 1 kg of hydrogen, which is 141 MJ, and dividing by the enthalpy, yields a thermal energy efficiency of roughly 60%. 
Gasoline, by comparison, requires less energy input, per gallon, at the refinery, and comparatively little energy is required to transport it and store it owing to its high energy density per gallon at ambient temperatures. Well to tank, the supply chain for gasoline is roughly 80% efficient Wang, 2002. Another grid-based method of supplying hydrogen would be to use electrical to run electrolyzers. Roughly 6% of electricity is lost during transmission along power lines, and the process of converting the fossil fuel to electricity in the first place is roughly 33% efficient. Thus if efficiency is the key determinant it would be unlikely hydrogen vehicles would be fueled by such a method, and indeed viewed this way, electric vehicles would appear to be a better choice. However, as noted above, hydrogen can be produced from a number of feedstocks, in centralized or distributed fashion, and these afford more efficient pathways to produce and distribute the fuel. A study of the well-to-wheels efficiency of hydrogen vehicles compared to other vehicles in the Norwegian energy system indicates that hydrogen fuel cell vehicles FCV tend to be about a third as efficient as EVs when electrolysis is used, with hydrogen internal combustion engines ICE being barely a sixth as efficient. Even in the case where hydrogen fuel cells get their hydrogen from natural gas reformation rather than electrolysis, and EVs get their power from a natural gas power plant, the EVs still come out ahead 35% to 25% and only 13% for a H2 ICE. This compares to 14% for a gasoline ICE, 27% for a gasoline ICE hybrid, and 17% for a diesel ICE. Also on a well-to-wheels basis, hydrogen has been called one of the least efficient and most expensive possible replacements for gasoline petrol in terms of reducing greenhouse gases. Other technologies may be less expensive and more quickly implemented. A comprehensive study of hydrogen in transportation applications has found that there are major hurdles on the path to achieving the vision of the hydrogen economy, the path will not be simple or straightforward. Although Ford Motor Company and French Renault-Nissan cancelled their hydrogen car R&D efforts in 2008 and 2009, respectively, they signed a 2009 letter of intent with the other manufacturers and now GmbH in September 2009 supporting the commercial introduction of FCVs by 2015. A study by the Carbon Trust for the UK Department of Energy and Climate Change suggests that hydrogen technologies have the potential to deliver UK transport with near zero emissions whilst reducing dependence on imported oil and curtailment of renewable generation. However, the technologies face very difficult challenges, in terms of cost, performance and policy. Topic. Hydrogen safety Hydrogen has one of the widest explosive ignition mix range with air of all the gases with few exceptions such as acetylene, silane, and ethylene oxide. That means that whatever the mix proportion between air and hydrogen, a hydrogen leak will most likely lead to an explosion, not a mere flame, when a flame or spark ignites the mixture. This makes the use of hydrogen particularly dangerous in enclosed areas such as tunnels or underground parking. Pure hydrogen oxygen flames burn in the ultraviolet color range and are nearly invisible to the naked eye, so a flame detector is needed to detect if a hydrogen leak is burning. Hydrogen is odorless and leaks cannot be detected by smell. Hydrogen codes and standards are codes and standards for hydrogen fuel cell vehicles, stationary fuel cell applications and portable fuel cell applications. 
There are codes and standards for the safe handling and storage of hydrogen, for example the standard for the installation of stationary fuel cell power systems from the National Fire Protection Association. Codes and standards have repeatedly been identified as a major institutional barrier to deploying hydrogen technologies and developing a hydrogen economy. To enable the commercialization of hydrogen in consumer products, new model building codes and equipment and other technical standards are developed and recognized by federal, state, and local governments. One of the measures on the roadmap is to implement higher safety standards like early leak detection with hydrogen sensors. The Canadian Hydrogen Safety Programme concluded that hydrogen fueling is as safe as, or safer than, compressed natural gas CNG, fueling. The European Commission has funded the first higher educational programme in the world in hydrogen safety engineering at the University of Ulster. It is expected that the general public will be able to use hydrogen technologies in everyday life with at least the same level of safety and comfort as with today's fossil fuels. Topic: <inaudible> Environmental concerns. There are many concerns regarding the environmental effects of the manufacture of hydrogen. Hydrogen is made either by electrolysis of water, or by fossil fuel reforming. Reforming a fossil fuel leads to a higher emissions of carbon dioxide compared with direct use of the fossil fuel in an internal combustion engine. Similarly, if hydrogen is produced by electrolysis from fossil fuel-powered generators, increased carbon dioxide is emitted in comparison with direct use of the fossil fuel. Using renewable energy source to generate hydrogen by electrolysis would require greater energy input than direct use of the renewable energy to operate electric vehicles, because of the extra conversion stages and losses in distribution. Hydrogen as transportation fuel, however, is mainly used for fuel cells that do not produce greenhouse gas emission, but water. There have also been some concerns over possible problems related to hydrogen gas leakage. Molecular hydrogen leaks slowly from most containment vessels. It has been hypothesized that if significant amounts of hydrogen gas H2 escape, hydrogen gas may, because of ultraviolet radiation, form free radicals H in the stratosphere. These free radicals would then be able to act as catalysts for ozone depletion. A large enough increase in stratospheric hydrogen from leaked H2 could exacerbate the depletion process. However, the effect of these leakage problems may not be significant. The amount of hydrogen that leaks today is much lower by a factor of 10 to 100 than the estimated 10 to 20% figure conjectured by some researchers. For example, in Germany, the leakage rate is only 0.1% less than the natural gas leak rate of 0.7%. At most, such leakage would likely be no more than 1 to 2% even with widespread hydrogen use using present technology. Topic: <coughs> Costs. In 2004, the production of unit of hydrogen fuel by steam reformation or electrolysis was approximately three to six times more expensive than the production of an equivalent unit of fuel from natural gas. When evaluating costs, fossil fuels are generally used as the reference. The energy content of these fuels is not a product of human effort and so has no cost assigned to it. Only the extraction, refining, transportation and production costs are considered. 
On the other hand, the energy content of a unit of hydrogen fuel must be manufactured, and so has a significant cost, on top of all the costs of refining, transportation, and distribution. Systems which use renewably generated electricity more directly, for example in trolleybuses, or in battery electric vehicles may have a significant economic advantage because there are fewer conversion processes required between primary energy source and point of use. The barrier to lowering the price of high-purity hydrogen is a cost of more than 35 kWh of electricity used to generate each kilogram of hydrogen gas. Hydrogen produced by steam reformation costs approximately three times the cost of natural gas per unit of energy produced. This means that if natural gas costs $6 per million BTU, then hydrogen will be $18 per million BTU. Also, producing hydrogen from electrolysis with electricity at 5 cents per kilowatt hour will cost $28 per million BTU. About 1.5 times the cost of hydrogen from natural gas. Note that the cost of hydrogen production from electricity is a linear function of electricity costs, so electricity at 10 cents per kilowatt hour means that hydrogen will cost $56 per million BTU. Demonstrated advances in electrolyzer and fuel cell technology by ITM Power are claimed to have made significant inroads into addressing the cost of electrolyzing water to make hydrogen. Cost reduction would make hydrogen from off-grid renewable sources economic for refueling vehicles. Hydrogen pipelines are more expensive than even long-distance electric lines. Hydrogen is about three times bulkier in volume than natural gas for the same enthalpy. Hydrogen accelerates the cracking of steel, hydrogen embrittlement, which increases maintenance costs, leakage rates, and material costs. The difference in cost is likely to expand with newer technology. Wires suspended in air can use higher voltage with only marginally increased material costs, but higher pressure pipes require proportionally more material. Setting up a hydrogen economy would require huge investments in the infrastructure to store and distribute hydrogen to vehicles. In contrast, battery electric vehicles, which are already publicly available, would not necessitate immediate expansion of the existing infrastructure for electricity transmission and distribution. Power plant capacity that now goes unused at night could be used for recharging electric vehicles. A study conducted by the Pacific Northwest National Laboratory for the U.S. Department of Energy in December 2006 found that the idle off-peak grid capacity in the U.S. would be sufficient to power 84% of all vehicles in the U.S. if they all were immediately replaced with electric vehicles. Different production methods each have differing associated investment and marginal costs. The energy and feedstock could originate from a multitude of sources, i.e. natural gas, nuclear, solar, wind, biomass, coal, other fossil fuels, and geothermal. Natural gas at small scale Uses steam reformation requires 15.9 million cubic feet 450,000 cubic meters of gas which if produced by small 500 kilograms per day reformers at the point of dispensing i.e. the filling station would equate to 777,000 reformers costing 1 trillion dollars and producing 150 million tons of hydrogen gas annually obviates the need for distribution infrastructure dedicated to hydrogen. $3 per GGE gallons of gasoline equivalent nuclear provides energy for electrolysis of water. Would require 240,000 tons of unenriched uranium 
that's 2,600 megawatt power plants, which would cost $840 billion, or about $2.50 per GGE. Solar provides energy for electrolysis of water. Would require 2,500 kilowatt hours of sun per square meter, 113,040 kilowatt systems, which would cost $22 trillion, or about $9.50 per GGE. Wind provides energy for electrolysis of water. At 7 m per second average wind speed, it would require 1,000,002 MW wind turbines, which would cost $3 trillion, or about $3 per GGE. Biomass Gasification plants would produce gas with steam reformation. 1.5 billion tons of dry biomass, 3,300 plants which would require 113.4 million acres, 460,000 square kilometers of farm to produce the biomass. $565 billion in cost, or about $1.90 per GGE. Coal Future-gen plants use coal gasification then steam reformation. Requires 1 billion ton of coal or about 1,275 megawatt plants with a cost of about $500 billion, or about $1 per GGE. Dough cost targets Topic. Examples and pilot programs Several domestic U.S. automobile manufacturers have committed to develop vehicles using hydrogen. The distribution of hydrogen for the purpose of transportation is currently being tested around the world, particularly in Portugal, Iceland, Norway, Denmark, Germany, California, Japan and Canada, but the cost is very high. Some hospitals have installed combined electrolyzer storage fuel cell units for local emergency power. These are advantageous for emergency use because of their low maintenance requirement and ease of location compared to internal combustion driven generators. Iceland has committed to becoming the world's first hydrogen economy by the year 2050. Iceland is in a unique position. Presently, it imports all the petroleum products necessary to power its automobiles and fishing fleet. Iceland has large geothermal resources, so much that the local price of electricity actually is lower than the price of the hydrocarbons that could be used to produce that electricity. Iceland already converts its surplus electricity into exportable goods and hydrocarbon replacements. In 2002, it produced 2,000 tons of hydrogen gas by electrolysis, primarily for the production of ammonia NH3 for fertilizer. Ammonia is produced, transported, and used throughout the world, and 90% of the cost of ammonia is the cost of the energy to produce it. Iceland is also developing an aluminium smelting industry. Aluminium costs are driven primarily by the cost of the electricity to run the smelters. Either of these industries could effectively export all of Iceland's potential geothermal electricity, neither industry directly replaces hydrocarbons. Reykjavik, Iceland, had a small pilot fleet of city buses running on compressed hydrogen, and research on powering the nation's fishing fleet with hydrogen is underway. For more practical purposes, Iceland might process imported oil with hydrogen to extend it, rather than to replace it altogether. The Reykjavik buses are part of a larger program, High Fleet, Cute, operating hydrogen-fueled buses in eight European cities. High Fleet, Cute buses were also operated in Beijing, China and Perth, Australia see below. 
A pilot project demonstrating a hydrogen economy is operational on the Norwegian island of Utsira. The installation combines wind power and hydrogen power. In periods when there is surplus wind energy, the excess power is used for generating hydrogen by electrolysis. The hydrogen is stored, and is available for power generation in periods when there is little wind. United States has a hydrogen policy with several examples. A joint venture between NREL and Excel Energy is combining wind power and hydrogen power in the same way in Colorado. Hydro in Newfoundland and Labrador are converting the current wind diesel power system on the remote island of Ramea into a wind hydrogen hybrid power systems facility. A similar pilot project on Stewart Island uses solar power, instead of wind power, to generate electricity. When excess electricity is available after the batteries are fully charged, hydrogen is generated by electrolysis and stored for later production of electricity by fuel cell. The UK started a fuel cell pilot program in January 2004. The program ran two fuel cell buses on Route 25 in London until December 2005, and switched to Route RV1 until January 2007. The Hydrogen Expedition is currently working to create a hydrogen fuel cell powered ship and using it to circumnavigate the globe, as a way to demonstrate the capability of hydrogen fuel cells. Western Australia's Department of Planning and Infrastructure operated three Daimler Chrysler Citaro fuel cell buses as part of its Sustainable Transport Energy for Perth fuel cells bus trial in Perth. The buses were operated by Path Transit on regular Transperth public bus routes. The trial began in September 2004 and concluded in September 2007. The bus's fuel cells used a proton exchange membrane system and were supplied with raw hydrogen from a BP refinery in Quinana, south of Perth. The hydrogen was a byproduct of the refinery's industrial process. The buses were refueled at a station in the northern Perth suburb of Malaga. The United Nations Industrial Development Organization (UNIDO) and the Turkish Ministry of Energy and Natural Resources have signed in 2003 a 40 million dollars trust fund agreement for the creation of the International Center for Hydrogen Energy Technologies (UNIDOICHET) in Istanbul, which started operation in 2004. A hydrogen forklift, a hydrogen cart and a mobile house powered by renewable energies are being demonstrated in UNIDOICHET's premises. An uninterruptible power supply system has been working since April 2009 in the headquarters of Istanbul Sea Buses Company. Hydrogen using alternatives to a fully distributive hydrogen economy For other energy alternatives, see Hydrogen is simply a method to store and transmit energy Various alternative energy transmission and storage scenarios which begin with hydrogen production, but do not use it for all parts of the store and transmission infrastructure, may be more economic, in both near and far term. These include Ammonia <laughs> economy <laughs> An alternative to gaseous hydrogen as an energy carrier is to bond it with nitrogen from the air to produce ammonia, which can be easily liquefied, transported, and used directly or indirectly as a clean and renewable fuel. For example, researchers at CSIRO in Australia in 2018 fueled a Toyota Mirai and Hyundai Nexo with hydrogen separated from ammonia using a membrane technology. Topic: 
Topic: <laughs> Hydrogen production of greenhouse neutral alcohol. The methanol economy is a sinfuel production energy plan which may begin with hydrogen production. Hydrogen in a full hydrogen economy was initially suggested as a way to make renewable energy, in non-polluting form, available to automobiles. However, a theoretical alternative to address the same problem is to produce hydrogen centrally and immediately use it to make liquid fuels from a CO2 source. This would eliminate the requirement to transport and store the hydrogen. The source could be CO2 that is produced by fuel burning power plants. In order to be greenhouse neutral, the source for CO2 in such a plan would need to be from air, biomass, or other source of CO2 which is already in, or to be released into, the air. Direct methanol fuel cells are in commercial use, though as of August 2011 they are not efficient. Topic: The electrical grid plus synthetic methanol fuel cells. Many of the hybrid strategies described above, using captive hydrogen to generate other more easily usable fuels, might be more effective than hydrogen production alone. Short-term energy storage, meaning the energy is used not long after it has been captured, may be best accomplished with battery or even ultracapacitor storage. Longer-term energy storage, meaning the energy is used weeks or months after capture, may be better done with synthetic methane or alcohols, which can be stored indefinitely at relatively low cost and even used directly in some type of fuel cells for electric vehicles. These strategies dovetail well with the recent interest in plug-in hybrid electric vehicles, or PHEVs, which use a hybrid strategy of electrical and fuel storage for their energy needs. Topic captive hydrogen synthetic methane production SNG synthetic natural gas in a similar way as with synthetic alcohol production, hydrogen can be used on site to directly non-biologically produce greenhouse neutral gaseous fuels. Thus, captive hydrogen mediated production of greenhouse neutral methane has been proposed. Note that this is the reverse of the present method of acquiring hydrogen from natural methane, but one that does not require ultimate burning and release of fossil fuel carbon. Captive hydrogen and carbon dioxide from, for example, CCS, carbon capture and storage, may be used on site to synthesize methane, using the Sabatier reaction. This is about 60% efficient, and with the round trip reducing to 20-36% to depending on the method of fuel utilization. This is even lower than hydrogen, but the storage costs drop by at least a factor of three, because of methane's higher boiling point and higher energy density. Liquid methane has 3.2 times the energy density of liquid hydrogen and is easier to store compactly. Additionally, the pipe infrastructure natural gas pipelines are already in place. Natural gas-powered vehicles already exist, and are known to be easier to adapt from existing internal engine technology, than internal combustion autos running directly on hydrogen. Experience with natural gas-powered vehicles shows that methane storage is inexpensive, once one has accepted the cost of conversion to store the fuel. However, the cost of alcohol storage is even lower, so this technology would need to produce methane at a considerable savings with regard to alcohol production. Ultimate mature prices of fuels in the competing technologies are not presently known, but both are expected to offer substantial infrastructural savings over attempts to transport and use hydrogen directly. 
It has been proposed in a hypothetical renewable energy dominated energy system to use the excess electricity generated by wind, solar photovoltaic, hydro, marine currents and others to produce hydrogen by electrolysis of water then combine it with CO2 make methane natural gas. Hydrogen would firstly be used on site in fuel cells CHP, or for transportation due to its greater efficiency of production and then methane created which could then be injected into the existing gas network to generate electricity and heat on demand to overcome low points of renewable energy production. The process described would be to create hydrogen, which could partly be used directly in fuel cells and the addition of carbon dioxide CO2 possibly from BECCS bioenergy with carbon capture and storage, via the Sabatier reaction, to create methane as follows, CO2 plus 4H2CH4 plus 2H2O. Note, after combusting methane in CCGT the CO2 would again be captured, i.e., CCS and used to produce new methane. See also